Hiya, and welcome back to Little Reverie. Rather than continuing with the Tokyo Mew Mew series today, I actually have something different for you all. Don't worry, the Mew Mew series is still going strong. But because we still have six more to go, I think it would be best to throw some variety into the mix, you know? Today, I'll be working on another commission. A birthday is coming up for the granddaughter of a family friend. So I was asked to make her a custom doll for her birthday. So without further ado, the character that the granddaughter wanted me to make is... Ochako Uraraka from My Hero Academia. Nice choice. We'll be making Ochako in her hero costume, which means I get to experiment a bit with some new techniques. This will definitely be a fun project. Now then, let's get started. I'll be using this Draculara doll here as a base for Ochako. Before getting started with the usual prep work, I begin by trimming and sanding down the seam lines of the doll. Like I said, we'll be using some different techniques for this doll. And since her costume's pretty skin tight, I'll be painting the outfit on her directly, and using an epoxy sculpt to create certain aspects of her outfit. So removing the seams and other raised details on the doll would be ideal for a cleaner look. I was actually inspired to do this based on Candy's dolls. I've seen her utilize this method a lot for some of her dolls, and she's so good at it. I'll provide the links to her channel and Instagram down below in the description box. So go check her out if you haven't already. Along with the seam lines, we'll also be removing the doll's sculpted underwear. With a lot of elbow grease and motivation, you can remove it with sandpaper alone. But I'm pretty impatient, so I think I'll just be using my Dremel tool to speed up the process. Now let's get started with prepping the doll. I have no need for her original hair, so let's hack it off. First I cut the hair as close to the head as I can. Then I prepare some boiling hot water, pour it in a cup, and dunk her head in there for a few minutes to soften the vinyl. Hmm, there's still plenty of water left over. Later. Mmm, chai tea. Oh yeah, she ready yet? Once you've finished your tea, I mean, after the vinyl becomes soft, we can tuck the head right off the neck peg. Be sure to shield your hands from the hot vinyl with a dishcloth or something. It's all funny games until you singe your hands. With the head removed, and while the head is still squishy, I use a pair of needle nose pliers to remove the remaining hair stubble from the inside of the head. Using scraping motions, you can remove tons of plugs in one go. Hmm. If this hero were one punch man, we could call the hair portion of this project done already. Moving on, I remove the doll's factory paint with 100% pure acetone. Then, once that is done, I wipe down the face with some hot soapy water to get rid of any acetone residue. Otherwise, MSC may not adhere properly. Once her head is dried, here is me contemplating doing a reroute for a change. Yeah, maybe some other time. Reunite the doll's head with body, I consider this a mistake in the long run, and then I'll begin sculpting some details on the doll's body. I first begin with sculpting the choker around her neck, hence one reason why I did consider putting her head back on first to be a mistake. Oh well, I'm not going to really do anything about it right now. This was a little difficult to sculpt on camera, so I ended up doing the majority of it off camera. After I was done sculpting and it had dried, I felt that the shape wasn't quite right, so I ended up sanding some parts of it to fix the shape. Once that was done, I decided to start working on the boots. I thought for the longest time about how to go about making them, and ultimately I decided to sculpt them directly to the doll. Because too much clay could potentially wear down on the leg, I roughly sculpted the shape of the boots with aluminum foil, using hot glue to secure the pieces together as I sculpted, as well as to shape certain parts of the boots. I then went over with air dry clay to finish the overall shape. Here's the first boot after layering the clay. While it is inevitable for the boots to weigh the legs down a bit, it isn't too bad. And now, here are both boots sculpted. All finished! <laughs> yeah, nowhere near. I got a lot of sanding ahead. 
finally, now that my room has been covered in an inch of white dust, the boots are now nice and smooth. Moving on to the wrist guards, I basically switched to this cold porcelain. I actually used this stuff some time ago for an art project in a 3D design class I took, and it was incredibly light. So I figured this would be best to use for her arms to prevent too much weight. I basically just made two balls of this stuff and pushed them right onto her forearms, shaping them once they were on. After they dried, I painted the wrist guards with some off-white paint with a slight pink tint. It was only after the first layer of paint that I realized I was forgetting one minor detail. The handles that are present on the wrist guards. I added them with epoxy sculpt before finishing up the painting process. Now let's sculpt her belt. For this I used epoxy sculpt. I went in with a couple of passes. The first pass was the basic shape of the belt. During this process, I sculpted the details such as the indentions in the front and around the belt. For the second pass, I went in and made the center portion by rolling a ball of epoxy. Then I used a ball tool to make the indention. While I was waiting for the first pass to dry, I decided to increase her bust size a bit with epoxy to match more with the character's design. I normally have a hard time blending in the epoxy to the plastic, but I think I am getting better. I did have to stand down some details, but you can't even tell once I start painting. Now then, all the sculpting is finally done. So for now, let's move on to the face up. As always, I first sprayed the doll with MSC before going in with a mixture of Arteza and Faber-Castell watercolor pencils, along with hand-rolled Munoz Soft Pastels. I try to mimic the same style as the anime with her eyes. I've never drawn eyes with such small irises before, so I need to be careful with how I approach them. Typically, small irises could give a character crazy eyes if you're not careful. I feel like I entered this territory a lot, and so there was a lot of back and forth on my part with them. Well, this will haunt me in my dreams. I struggled so much with the irises that I had to work with them a lot off camera. Here they are now, a lot better. Trust me, while they still look crazy now, they'll look a lot better once they're done. I kept her makeup pretty light, to match more with the anime's design. I did give her her signature blush though.
finishing off with the eye shines, I spray her face one last time with MSC. And her face up's done! While I was going through each layer of MSC, I worked on the body as well. Because paint chips off way too easily around a doll's joints, I decided to use black soft pastels. The finer pigment latches onto the surface better, and it doesn't rub off as easily as paint would. So while I paint the majority of the body, I use black soft pastels to cover the knee, hip, and elbow joints. As I seal each layer with MSC, I also went over top it with a matte varnish to help seal in the paint and prevent any scratches. Oh, by the way, I know that her suit is a full body suit and covers her upper arms and shoulders. Paint would have inevitably chipped away at her shoulder joints pretty badly, and going lighter is very difficult with pigments. I did dust them with several layers of white pastel, so it is a little lighter than the rest of her body. Now then, once the lower half of her body was done, I painted the boots the same color as her wrist guards. I also used the same color for the off-white portion of her bodysuit and her belt as well. Finish up with the pink details of her outfit and the gray part of her heels. Lastly, to finish everything with the body, I seal the painted areas of the doll in a final layer of matte varnish. And with that, her body modifications are all done! I love how she's able to stand on her own too. <laughs> Finally, we can move on to the hair. I'm using this viscose fiber in the color of cinnamon. It's so soft and the perfect match for Ochako's hair. To those who have not used viscose before or don't know what it is, it's a plant-based fiber. It also cannot get wet or it will frizz. I typically use viscose roving, which comes in these long strands. If you have strands like these when you comb out your viscose rovings, just cut them from the comb and use them for short hair or bangs. Before I trim the desired length from the roving, I strengthen the fiber with a flat iron. Then, I glue the strands directly to the doll's head. Once that is all done and she's been given a little trim, she's all done! I had so much fun making this doll, and I hope that her new owner loves her just as much as I do. I was able to explore a lot with some new techniques, and it's always fun to try out new things with doll customizing. Before I go, I would also like to let you guys know that I'm planning on doing a Q&A video as a way to commemorate us reaching 1K. There's so many of you guys now, it's amazing, and I can't thank you all enough for the support. For the Q&A, if you have a question you would like me to answer, you can post it down below or over on my community post. The questions can be art related or even about me as a way to get to know me better. Now then, this video is getting pretty long, so I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, from Little Reverie to you, may you all have a wonderful day. Until next time!